All right, and our next uh, speaker will be Monami Roy. And she's going to be speaking about challenges and usefulness of creating a database of groups in the LMFD. And uh, Monami, is it okay if we um, video your talk? Yes, it is okay. Yeah. All right, thank you. Um, thank you, Rachel, for the introduction. And thank you, the organizer, for inviting me to talk about this ISRAM project. Um, so this um, ISRAM project is about creating a database of finite groups in LMFDV. So this, is, uh, this project is joined with all the people mentioned in the slide. So in the uh, beginning of my talk, I would like to give you guys this link of the web page of our database. This is not publicly available for the LMFDV yet. This is not yet in the beta version, but um, I encourage you to click on the link and look around. So this database for finite abstract groups, if you click on the link in the beginning, you will be seeing a page which looks like this. This is a landing page. I'm going to come back and give you a live demo of the page, what we have currently on this page. But um, in the beginning, I want to start the talk by asking some of the questions. And the questions I'm going to discuss today is, is there already a database of finite group exist? And if there is already a finite uh, group database, why do you need one in, inside the LMFDV? The third question I'm going to discuss is, what are the, some of the challenges in creating the database? And the fourth point is, what are some of the usefulness of this database and what can we do for in future with the database? So let me start with my first question. Um, so if you already know that there exists a database of finite group, and this database is by Team Doxitus, and this database contains all the small group of order up to uh, 50, up, uh, order up to 500. And I have given you the link here, and I think Jane is also putting the link on the chat. So you can click on the link, and this is again the landing page when you go to the link. And it, it, this is a very simple-minded page. It's this page lists all the groups one by one by the order, and you can click on these groups to get the individual page. So I really um, encourage you guys to uh, look at both of the pages and compare. And if you have any suggestions in the end of the talk, you can tell me. So um, our LMFDV group page is basically um, builds on this page by Team Doxeter. So we are inspired by this page. Uh, but uh, if you, you can ask this question, like if there is a page like this, why do you need one inside the LMFDV? So that's the, that's the next question um, I want to answer. Like, why do you need another database inside LMFDV? So I want to remind you that LMFDV database itself is a very integral database where you have different sections and each of these different sections or different pages are interrelated with each other. And it turns out that these abstract finite groups, they appear in many of the sections um, in the um, database and uh, they have, they actually deserve their own page. So I want to, give you some example where the abstract group appears and why they deserve their own pages. So one of the example I want to give is this um, page of Galva group. So if you look at the LMFDB page to inside the groups, there is this Galva group page. I took one example right here, particular example where you see the abstract group appearing. This is the semi-direct product of C3 and C8. These are the cyclic groups. Um, of order three and order eight. So, so right now um, there is no abstract group page. So nothing is linked to this abstract group. There is no information about this abstract group, but when we have the page available, it will be linked here. Um, the next example I want to give is this automorphism group of higher genus curve and uh, Q bar or Q automorphism group of genus two curves. So there are these two different pages inside LMFDV again. So if you go under the variety, there is this genus two curve over Q and there is this higher genus families. I'm giving you an example of a, a genus three family where the automorphism group is this rich product of C4 and C2. One of the thing you can see here in this page that um, there is a list of the generators uh, of this group in terms of the permutation group. 
But if we can write down the abstract group in terms of their own generators and relation, then this thing here in this page can be replaced later. The next example I want to give is the monodromy group of Bailey maps. So there is this page of Bailey maps. This is on the beta version of the LMFDB. This is not available yet. So um, publicly not available. So in this page, if you go to this monodromic group, I chose a particular example. You can see an abstract group appearing. Currently, if you go there, there is a null which gives you a little bit of information about this abstract group itself. This is a, actually a transitive group, but we can later on link it to our group page itself. And the last example I want to show you is this inertia group of um, periodic fields. So if you again go to the LMFDB page and you look under the fields, there is this periodic fields. I cho chose the particular periodic field of the um, degree 10 and inside that you will see that the Galva groups are the transitive groups, but the inertia groups are these intransitive groups which are isomorphic to some abstract group. So again, this abstract group right here, this is the semi-direct product of this group and this group. So uh, what I'm trying to point out is all these abstract groups are appearing in different sections of LMFDV. So it's really deserve their own pages where you have all the information about these abstract groups. And the second reason is that uh, Team Doxeter's page, they, um, the, each of the group pages, they, there is a different HTML file, separate HTML file for each of the group pages, which are loading from the static file. But whereas the LMFDB page, they are uh, generating from this uh, in a dynamical way from, from the database. So each of the group page actually have less storage inside the LMFDB. Uh, whereas it probably take more storage in the um, Docsitters page. And also we can do any of the updates on these groups. Like if you want to add a feature of the a data of the up, in the group page, any of the group page, then you just have to add one line into the code and it will be done very easily. So it's very easily um, updated. You can update it very easily. So, um, so these are the like few of the uh, reasons why we probably want to see a page in LMFDV about the groups. So let me give you guys a demo for this. So the link is already given. So let me share, stop sharing this, then I will share my page with the web page. So, okay, so this is the, again, the landing page. I hopefully, yeah, everybody can see this. So this is the landing page of um, our abstract groups. You can browse through by orders. You can again browse through by nil potency class and there is the other search option. So you can play with it. I'm going to click on any one of them. Like if you go to this, then you can see that there is this refined search page where you can search further by the, some of the properties. And inside, if you look at this list, um, it's giving you the levels of the group. And these levels are the, exactly the same as the gap level or the levels you see in the magma. You can see different other notations for the group and you'll be wondering some of them and you can look at this null. So each of the LMFDB page has the null or the short form for knowledge for each of the features. So if you look at the nulls, there are some basic groups and there are some notation which are given you the uh, definitions for all these groups. And also you can see the order exponent and all this feature and the types of the groups are all, also given here. So now let's go to the get, go to a particular page for a group. I have already opened one. This is the group, the Rift product of C4 and C2. This is the group I showed in one of the genus three curve page, which appeared. So, so the basic group information in the beginning are given is the group itself. Then what is the order and the exponent? Then the automorphism groups are given, and then the minimal degree for the permutation representation. So we are thinking about um, like giving some more information about the permutation representation itself uh, other than the degree later on. So we'll be adding that. And in the next line, you can see that some of the adjectives about the groups are given. So it's non-abelian, unsolvable and so on, right? Some of whatever this group satisfy those adjectives are given. So the next things which are given in the page are the how, we, how these groups can be constructed. So for example, this group right here, 
It's isomorphic to this semi-direct products and these non-split products. And also we give a presentation of this group um, uh, in a particular way. So the presentation, the way it happens, it's explained in this null. So, uh, so getting a base presentation of, of a group, this is, some, this, is a, this is a question which needed some thinking. And if the, the group is solvable, then it seems like we can give a policy click presentation. So in this particular case, what we do is we, we chose all the minimal length policy click series and then we rank them in a particular way, in a certain way. One of the first criteria you can see here that it has to have minimal number of generators. And then we have certain other criteria to choose one to represent the group. Um, so this presentation right here, which you are seeing, and if you compare this with um, Team Doxeter's page, then the presentation there and this presentation would be probably different. Probably in the Team Doxeter's page, they will have more, more generators to generate this. So you, you have to make a decision of what presentation would be nice and what presentation to be used. And this particular question uh, needed some thinking. One of the things we had to think about. Now, the next thing I want to show here is the subgroups. So there are certain special subgroups of these groups are given. What is the total number of subgroup and the conjugacy class? That's also given. So here um, you can see all the subgroups here. So centers and commutator and fraternity and so on. And the next on the list is the diagram. So this is a subgroup diagram, which is probably a little bit different from the other subgroup diagram you have been seeing in LMFDB. So this subgroup diagram is given in terms of the um, uh, conjugacy, you look at the conjugacy classes of the subgroup. So the, the explanation of the subgroup diagram is also given in this null. And you can see that this diagram is taken on the set of conjugacy classes of the subgroup with respect to the inclusion. Now, if you look at this subgroup diagram particularly, so you can move all these subgroups and you can move all these nodes of the subgroups and make the diagram as easily readable as for you, like how you like it. And for each of the subgroup you click, there is a certain information about the subgroups are given right here. So for example, this particular subgroup, you know what is the normalizer. Now, if you click on the normalizer, for example, then it will show it on the subgroup diagram. So if you click on the normal closer, it will also show in the subgroup diagram. Code is also showing. So all this information you can see. You can also go to this um, uh, page of the subgroup itself by clicking on this link, which I'm not doing right now. Now, if you click outside of the subgroup information, then the subgroup information is gone. Then you have to click back again in one of this to get the information back. So this way, the, the subgroup diagram is kind of giving you the information about all the subgroup in a compact way. The next thing we have in the list is the different kind of series of uh, for this particular group. So if you click on this derived series, then you can see that the sub, in the subgroup diagram, those particular subgroups are being highlighted. For example, if I click on this cheap series, you can see the same, the subgroups are being highlighted there. Oh, one thing I forgot, completely forgot to mention about the subgroup diagram is that um, roughly all the groups which have same order, they are on the same height. So you can see the C4, uh, C2 square, all of them are in the same height. And the groups which are uh, normal, they don't have an indices, but if there is a group is not normal, then it gives you the, the number of conjugacy, subgroup in the conjugacy class. So which is given by this indices two here. So these are the, all the information about the subgroups and the series of the group. The next thing we have in the list is these super groups. So the, the group we have, the C4 with read product with C2, that is a maximal subgroup of all the groups given here. And that is also maximal quotient of all the subgroups which are given here. So these informations about uh, this supergroup informations are also given here. And the next thing on the list is the character theory. So what are the character tables that we list the two of the character tables. One is the complex one and the other one is the rational character table. So in, if you look at any of these character tables, the rows are the ones which are given, uh, which are the characters, the individual characters and the columns are 
um, the, gal the conjugacy classes. So if you click on, for example, the, if I click on this rational character table in this particular conjugacy class, there is a null which gives you the information about this conjugacy class. So this rational class has, uh, is the union of two conjugacy class and you can see those two conjugacy class are becoming these two conjugacy class right here. So this 4C gives you 4C1 and 4C negative one, it's actually the inverse. So this guy is actually the inverse of this one. So there, there is some thoughts on choosing the labels of this conjugacy class also, and uh, how we are labeling them and the informations are given inside this null if you look at it. But as you can see that 4C goes to 4C1 and the inverse. So if you have a power, then we'll write 4C3 or 4C5 or something like that. You can also look at the informations about this character. For example, you have this character, particular character 2C, the level is 2C in the end, which gives you two characters in the complex table. So if you click on any of the characters right here, it gives you the information about the character itself. So it has degree two, this is a faithful character where the values are, these are also given. And you can also click on the image and you can see the image inside the GL2C. So if I click on it, then you can see the image inside the GL2C, you can see the generators of this as well. So all these informations you can see from the page. So let me go back to this page. So these are all the information you can see on this um, whole page. One of the other thing I wanted to mention is that if your group is not, not solvable, so I have one of the example right here. So this is a group which is not solvable. Um, in this case, the generators are not, it doesn't have a polycyclic series. So the generators are given in terms of the permutations. So this is one of the differences, what happens if the group is not solvable. So, okay, so like I said, there are, there are, particularly, there are particularly few of the things which you have to think about. So I want to discuss this. So let me go back uh, to my slides again. So the particularly the few of the things which we had to think about, which are kind of, I'm thinking about some of the challenges, right? Challenges means like, these are some of the things which are non-trivial when you had to think about what is the best way of doing these things. And one of the thing is the base presentation of the group uh, when it's solvable, right? So what presentation do you choose? Like, like I mentioned that in this case, we had to choose one presentation where it was polycyclic presentation, then we had to rank them in a certain order and then, then, get, then choose the presentation for this group, right? So there was a thinking going on there. Also in terms of the writing the uh, rational and complex character table, what is the best way to write the character, which order it will be the best to write the characters and how to present the values of the character for the complex character in a minimal, in terms of the minimal um, terms, that also needs a little bit of thinking. And also we had to think about a little bit about the subgroup diagram, like what is the best way of giving the subgroup diagram and the last thing, which is a non-trivial thing we have to think about is how to label the subgroups and the conjugacy class of the group. So if I give you a group uh, and if you are looking at all the subgroups, do you label them as they come in or do you label them in a particular way so that you can reconstruct that? I mean, you would probably want to reconstruct the subgroup, right? You don't want to get a new subgroup each time. If I give you a label of a subgroup, then you want to get the same subgroup each time. So this, this question, the last question also needed a little bit of thinking of what is the best way of doing it. And um, in, I, Drew and um, Jane and other people from my group, they have actually th thought about this question before the ISRAM, before we met in the ISRAM actually for the subgroup levels already. So all of these questions had a little bit of thinking. There are a few other things probably goes into the background, but most of them are computing those data. And the last thing I want to mention is about what are the future plan, right? So if you look at the, if you look at the uh, current available data on our group page, there are only up to order 126, you can see. So we don't have a large number of orders group yet because we are kind of testing for all the you know, errors and all the bugs. But ultimately the goal is to put more groups of larger order there, uh, including the group like GLN over um, a finite field and SLN over finite field. So um, the goal will be 
to get more data on the LMFDV and have it available to everybody. And the next thing is having the group which are not yet there. So for, we want to get all the finite subgroups of GLN over Z, Q, and C, all these fields inside the group. These are not available yet, but these are the groups which also helps us in the character table, um, the representation of those in the complex character tables. Um, so we would like to have the separate page for these finite subgroups. And in the end, probably the goal would be to have this group page beyond the small groups, right? I mean, the small groups are the one which we are starting with, but in the end, we would want to have it, um, um, the, what we want to have this group uh, page more than the small groups data. That would need a little bit more work. And once we have the group page available, we want to link them to all the other pages in the LMFDV and particularly using this data, um, Jane would be working on uh, uh, getting some more data on the higher, higher genus curve page. So in terms of the generators of the groups and everything. And also the, in the belly maps page, the automorphism groups of belly maps, um, I mean, Sam and the others are working on this page and they already have computed the automorphism group, but the best way to represent automorphism group is by the abstract group. So once we have this available, then the automorphism group data will be also available in the belly maps page. Uh, one of the other thing is um, David Rowe has been working on uh, David Rowe, one of the collaborators in this project, have been working on a database of algebraic tori and integral Galva representation. So there is basically a database he's been working on, but it's not available yet in the LMFDB. But this also requires some information from the abstract group page. Uh, particularly, if you look at this algebraic tori, they can be given in terms of some finite subgroup of GL and Z and um, some other isomorphism. So the finite subgroup of GL and Z and their representations, those will be useful information for this database of algebraic tori. And um, I want to say um, one more uh, thing. It's, uh, it's the reason why I was interested in the LMFDB project. Um, so there is this, if you start with any non-CM elliptic curve over Q, which is given by a Wester's equation, then there is an associated automorphic representation. So since I'm taking non-CM, this would be a cuspidal automorphic representation of GL2. So they are given by this tensor product of this local representation. So pi p's are the local representation of GL2 QP. So there is an explicit algorithm to compute these local representations um, in terms of the Wester's coefficients, the given Wester's coefficients. So only from the information of these coefficients, there is a explicit elementary algorithm to compute this representation, how they look like in terms of the characters and the orders of the characters. So this is a data which I uh, had computed as a part of my PhD thesis. And I would really love to have this data inside the LMFDB page. Um, so, and this page will also be linked to the group page because the way you look at this local representation, you have to look at this well denial representation and the image of the inertia subgroup there. So there is some group theory involved there, but the groups which appears is a very small order groups, not a very large order, but still it would be linked to the group page. So these are some of the future plan and application I had in mind. So to end the talk, I have some question for all the audience here. So if you look at the um, group page, uh, which you have, uh, what do you think where that would be useful? And uh, can you think of any good data which we should add in the abstract group page which would be useful for you? So these are the two questions I want to leave everybody with. And that's it, what I had. Thank you everybody for listening. <laughs>